Did you know that you can rent out a property for just a few days at a time if you're looking to make some extra quick cash? That's right, the days of six month and 12 month leases, they're coming to an end and if you wanna get your hands on some quick cash by becoming a landlord to vacationers or travelers, the information I have for you here today can really get you going. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over some positives and negatives that come with short term property renting and if you wanna get started in this growing trend, this video is going to be for you. What's up, Clever Investors? Cody Sperber back again, giving you another awesome and exciting training video about what's going on in today's real estate world. Right now, we're going to be talking about how you can get into the real estate business as a landlord right? And be able to make some quick cash, but not just normal quick cash. We're talking about multiple return on your landlording experience doing short-term rentals. And I'm going to be going through some of the pros and the cons of what has clearly become a hardcore real estate strategy. I'll say that a couple of times, hardcore real estate strategy. But before I get too deep in today's topic, that's another one. Jeez, we, I got a couple of them today, you know, in, in today's topic. Today. I want to thank all my new visitors for tuning into the channel. Here we talk about how to escape the rat race using creative real estate investing strategies. So if this is something that interests you, please consider subscribing. Also hit that bell to receive post notifications. That way you're notified whenever I release hot, fresh, new content just like this one. All right, for everybody else, welcome back. Let's dive on in. All right, let's talk about short-term rentals. Now, typically when a potential landlord's looking to rent out their property, they're gonna do it through a standard six-month or 12-month lease. Now, you're probably wondering what's wrong with that proven you know, standard of landlording, which is longer-term rental agreements. Well, this kind of a rental agreement, it's existed for years, and in truth, it's still a nice way to earn income, although it is fairly limiting. For example, let's just say you have a property and you purchase this property, and you're gonna use conventional financing. Let's say you purchase the property for $330,000, and you got an interest rate of 3.6%, and you use, like I said, a conventional loan, and you put down 20%, which is $66,000, all right? From there, you're pretty much, uh, if you put that into a mortgage calculator, over 30 years, which is the length for a standard loan, in the ballpark, you're gonna be looking at a monthly mortgage payment of about $1,600, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Now, most of that is gonna to go towards interest in the beginning, but some will go towards principal, and then you also have taxes and, uh, in, like I said, insurance, all right? It's just a standard way to buy a property. So, let's say you now own this house and you wanna rent it out, all right? You could just place a you know, a sign in the yard, or you can put your house up on Craigslist or on any rental website, and you could charge whatever you think fits, right? But there are some limitations. So think of this. You can't just, you know, take this $330,000 house and all of a sudden charge $4,000, $5,000 a month for it, right? Because one of two things is gonna happen. People are either one, gonna underprice you, for other comparative rentals in the area, or two, there's a chance that you could live in an area that actually enforces rent control legislation. Now, some states do this, like Maryland and New Jersey and California and New York, and they actually limit on how much you can charge a tenant, right? And you wanna make sure that you're not limited by these limitations. Look, the bottom line is this. You're gonna need to see one of two things. Like I said, you gotta see what other people are renting properties for so that way you can be competitive. We gotta make sure you understand the regulations. Either way, once you know what the landscape is telling you to adhere to, all right, you gotta decide on what you're gonna rent the property out for. So let's just say in this example, you decide to rent the property out for $2,000 a month. That means that you're gonna have about $400 in positive cash flow left over every single month that you collect rent, all right? And if you pay that every 30 days and you collect the $400 and there's 12 months, if you multiply 400 by 12, you're getting $4,800 in annual profits from your rental. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad number, but let's face it, you could do a lot better. And don't forget that you're also being taxed on these profits, so that's also gonna be putting a pretty big dent in the old pocketbook. 
And this is where short-term rentals come into play. All right, there's so much more possibilities with short-term rentals. Let's go over some of them right now. Now, unlike long-term rental agreement, short-term rentals are a little bit looser when it comes to the regulations. Most of the time, neither you nor the tenant are gonna be bound by the contractual paperwork, which presents an advantage to you in that you can basically charge whatever you deem fit for your property, all right? Now, this time the rental agreement is only gonna be a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks at most, all right? So there's a lot more space to move monetarily speaking, right? You could fluctuate the price. Let's examine some of the benefits of short-term rental agreements versus long-term rental agreements. Now listen, since you're not bound by the same rules and regulations as somebody that operates a hotel or a legitimate motel chain, something like that, because you're just renting out your home or your apartment, you have a lot more pricing power and controllability. I might've made that up, but you get what I'm saying. All right, you could charge something better than a short or long-term rental agreement and make more money for yourself especially if you're in a good area with nice restaurants and uh, maybe an amusement park or other tourist attractions or a mountain or hiking or maybe even something seasonal. I know people over in Scottsdale during golf season when Arizona's not 60 billion degrees, uh, they jack their short-term rental prices way up and make a killing during golf season, right? And the golfers like it because they could stay at their property, which is much more comfortable to them, maybe right next to the golf course versus staying at a normal hotel. And let's just be honest with each other. If you're a smart, savvy marketer, you're gonna look around at what all the other hotels and resorts are doing. If they're peak season too, right? So they're gonna be jacking their prices up and you know, shoppers are always looking to save money and keep as much money in their pockets as possible. So let's just say they're doing their research. They see that the Phoenician or the Biltmore, a nice resort is charging, you know, 800 bucks a night as a nightly price tag, right? And let's say you decide to undercut what's going on in the local market and you decide to uh, advertise your short-term rental property and give customers a little bit of a discount. And instead of charging that much as a standard resort, you knock it down to 300 bucks a night. Um, so let's just say you decide to do that. That's hundreds of dollars cheaper than a hotel. And if you land the right tenant and they stay for, let's just say four nights, that's $1,200 of profit going into your pocket when their stay is over. That's almost as much as your entire monthly mortgage payment on the home. Remember, I said, let's say it's a $330,000 home, cost you $1,600. Well, you almost brought that in on one tenant for just a few nights. And if they decide to stay for five nights, you got the entire amount covered. All right, now here's the good part. You're probably gonna take a few days to clean up the property after the tenant left, but the fact is, and depending on how quick you are to clean the place up and get it turned around, you probably have that done in like half a day, maybe 24 hours at most. And if you get everything back in a tip top shape again, boom, you're able to rent the property out again to an entirely new tenant. The process starts over. They stay for another four or five days, make another quick 12 to $1,400, boom, right in your pocket, and there you go. All right, and if you're doing two or three of these tenants per month, right, let's just say two, being conservative. That's $2,400 per month. That's $28,800 per year. And let's just say we subtract back out the mortgage, which was $1,600 a month over 12 months. That's $19,200. Take 28,800 subtracted by 19,200, you're still left with $9,600. Think about that for a second. You're not even engaged with full-time rental agreements. You don't have to rent it out for 12 months. You're renting out sporadically for much shorter periods and you walked away with almost $5,000 more than your standard long-term lease. Look, you're probably gonna to wanna to put some of your profits away to ensure that you always have working capital so you can keep the property clean, you can keep it renovated, and you're gonna to wanna to put some of that cash in your pocket so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor, but you're also gonna to wanna to put some of your profits away for marketing, right? Marketing is the key to being successful with short-term rentals, all right? You wanna have badass pictures. You wanna have an amazing online reputation. You wanna heavily promote your property on VRBO or Airbnb or whatever short-term rental website you have it out there on. Because if you think about it, if you just go from two tenants per month to three tenants per month, now we're talking about 
$3,600 per month. All right, you still have that $1,600 mortgage payment, but now you're earning an extra $2,000 each and every month. That's $24,000 in extra profit every single year. That's not a bad way to go. You know what I mean? All right, now we've talked about why short-term rental agreements can be beneficial to you. And before we wrap this training up, let's discuss some extra tips so that way you can move forward powerfully and dominate as short-term rental landlord. Now, as mentioned before, you're gonna to wanna to research the rules of your area. If your city enforces short-term rental regulations, you're gonna to wanna to be aware of that. Take advantage of the rules and make sure you understand them so that way you can avoid trouble later. Areas like New York City and San Francisco do not allow people to rent out their homes or apartments out for less than 29 days. So if there are rules like this in your region, make sure you know about them. Now, once you move forward and you got yourself a tenant agreeing to your short-term rental property rates, you need to get your hands on a damage deposit. Now, this is going to ensure that the tenant remains on their best behavior. Last thing you want, rolling into the party, Guns N' Roses style, uh, throw a wild rager and just completely destroy your place, all right? So once their stay is over, you look, make sure the property is in tip-top shape, they get their money back, and you have peace of mind knowing that you're going to be able to rent out your property again and again. Now this last tip is really more advanced and it's probably a little more aggressive, but I know investors that are doing it and they're making a freaking killing. Think about this. What if you got into short-term rentals without owning any real estate? I mean, think about it. If you can find a property that is, let's just say, the person is having a hard time renting it or it's been sitting on the rental market for a while and you roll up and you have your paperwork and you say, hey, I'd like to rent this property, but if I rent it, I need to make sure that you're okay with me subleasing it, right? You're gonna go, what do you mean? Well, I wanna sublease it because I run a short-term rental company and I wanna add this property to my portfolio, so I'll rent it for you, from you, and then I'm gonna turn around and sublease it out to other people. And if that landlord is cool with it, then now you become a sub-landlord underneath them and you can turn somebody else's property into short-term rentals. How cool is that? Now you can actually build a pretty big rental portfolio without actually owning any real estate. All right, what do you guys think? That's all I have for you in today's training video. Making money through short-term rentals, entirely possible. Lots of people are doing it. I like that way better than the traditional route, obviously, because you make a ton more money. All right, and it's all about knowledge and creativity and being a clever investor. So now that you know that this exists, go out there and crush it and get yourself into some short-term rentals. That's all I have for you in this one. Uh, if you want more in-depth step-by-step training, click the link in the pinned comment section down below. Make sure that you smash that like button or the dislike button, depending on how you feel about this one. And until next time, I am Cody Sperber, the original Clever Investor, signing off for now. Till then, take care, comb your hair, Sperber out.